This week we're going to exclusively focus on weather market in South America, specifically looking at the divergent weather trends that are occurring in Brazil and Argentina. We're also going to briefly look at trends in November soybean futures. Hi, this is Brian Bastien with Advanced Trading. Let's talk about the soybean market. We've moved into the last half of January here and the soybean market is extremely volatile. And that's a direct reflection of the weather trends that are occurring in Brazil and Argentina. I want to take a moment today to highlight the importance of working with your trusted risk management advisor during a time of great uncertainty. In this case, a weather market. No one can predict the weather. Things are going to change very rapidly. It's most important to remain detached here and manage price movement and avoid predicting price movement. Let's move forward now and start out by looking at trends in Brazil. Let's start out by looking at where those beans are produced in Brazil. We've looked at this slide before, but it bears repeating that across a very large production area, we're seeing a divergence of trends in terms of soybean maturity. In the largest producing state of Mato Grosso, we're actually seeing harvest take place. About five to 10% of the harvest has already been completed in Mato Grosso. As we move further south though, into the states such as Mato Grosso do Sul, Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul, those beans are in the pod set and pod fill stage. We all know how important pod set and pod fill stage is during late August or mid-August here in the States. Let's move forward now and focus on short-term weather trends for Brazil. Our slides this week, as usual, are courtesy of T-Storm Weather. We're going to start out looking at the 30-day the uh, proxy or 30-day total of precip. It serves as a proxy for subsoil moisture. I mentioned that harvest is already starting in Mato Grosso. Here's the key factor to keep in mind. It's actually uh, quite wet in some areas of Mato Grosso, and there's actually a bit of concern about how it is too wet in some of those areas. Now, it's not something that's catastrophic by any means, but it's something we want to monitor with quite a bit of that harvest yet ahead of us. As we move further south in the country, however, you can see it dries out, and that's what's caught the market's attention in terms of how dry it is in southern Brazil. Let's now look at the temperatures for this week. And here in the Midwest, we're looking in a very, very cold stretch here. In the southern Brazil area, though, there's a heat wave developing. In those uh, red areas, pushing 90 to 100 degrees. And in that purple region, over 100 degrees. And notice that that does encompass part of Rio Grande do Sul, which is the third largest producing state of beans in Brazil. So again, there is some concern uh, as we move into these last two weeks in January about a weather market developing weather uh, crop losses in southern Brazil. Let's look at the rainfall totals for the next two weeks now. Again, it looks like close to normal up in the northern areas where, where harvest is taking place in Mato Grosso. As we move further south, it does dry out a bit though, which is the, the divergent trends even within the country. And there is concern about the dryness in southern Brazil, particularly those southern states. Let's move forward now and focus on Argentina. Argentina, we're gonna highlight three key provinces here. We're gonna look at Buenos Aires, uh, Cordoba, and Santa Fe. And uh, we're looking at uh, a sizable amount of the production uh, pushing 80% in those three provinces. Let's now look at the short-term weather trends for Argentina. For Argentina, we're looking at a much drier pattern across those provinces, intensely dry in some areas. This is what supported the bean market that latter part of December into early January. But change is coming. When we look at the next 14 days, look at how wet it is over the next 10 days, beg your pardon, look how wet it is across those provinces. Anywhere from one to three inches across those core production areas where those beans are in the pod set and pod fill stage. Now, it's still quite a long uh, way to go yet in terms of production. Uh, we're looking at beans that have not even been planted yet, the double crop beans after wheat harvest. So I don't want to say that this is a, a drought breaking rain, but it definitely is a, a temporary reprieve from the dry weather we've been seeing. Quantifying that as we wrap things up, looking again at those dark green areas here across those provinces, looking at some ample rainfall that will at least buy the bean crop there some time. Pressured the bean market a little bit here to start the week after the holiday. Let's wrap things up this week, looking briefly at trends in November soybean futures. Now we've looked at this slide before, but with the November uh, beans near 1285 a bushel, that's the, uh, the highest price for early January in nine years. So uh, again, strongly encourage you to work closely with your trusted risk management advisor to manage price movement. Now, if you'd like more information, please feel free to contact us at 800-664-2321. We'll put you in contact with one of our risk management consultants who'll be happy to visit with you at your convenience. And remember, we upload every Wednesday. 
Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Never miss an upload. Thanks a lot. Have a good week.